Well, this is it. The last video of the year of Sonic. I'll be honest, I'm kind of sad that it's almost over. I still remember when I announced it at the end of the Mario & Luigi finale ranking. I was so excited to spend a year talking about my favorite gaming franchise, and now it's coming to an end. We had our bumps in the road for sure, but I still had a fun time making videos this year, and I hope that y'all enjoyed watching those videos. Needless to say though, I'll never truly be done with Sonic. He's the face of my channel and is a franchise near and dear to my heart after all. But I am going to take a very long break from Sonic content in the coming year. He might pop up here and there in general videos, but we're going to leave the blue blur behind for a while. So let's finish loud and proud the only way we can, by ranking the games. What is there to say about the Sonic games as a whole that hasn't already been said? After playing through all the ones I need to for the sake of this year, the best way I can describe the games is a roller coaster of quality. There are so many highs and lows and bumps in between that no one can definitively agree on which game is truly the best or even the worst, honestly. Which is why I want to emphasize something. This list is my opinion. Nothing I say in this ranking is objective fact. It's all how I personally feel about all these games. If you disagree, that's fine. In fact, after the premiere, feel free to share your personal ranking in the comments below. I look forward to seeing the radically different takes. With that said, the rules are I'm only including Sonic games, not crossovers he appears in or glorified DLC to separate games. So that means no Mario and Sonic, Sonic and All-Stars Racing, Sonic Speed Simulator, or LEGO Dimensions. Team Sonic Racing's still here though, since that's a Sonic game. Also, since many games on here have different versions on different systems, they'll be grouped with the main version people know because I feel the same about both versions. But, that doesn't mean I'll be including versions that are largely the same, just with minor differences. So to the five people asking, no, Sonic 1 GBA is not on here. It may have some new features, but it is still Sonic 1, just crappier. I will mention Sonic Colors Ultimate, however, since that's a remaster with drastically different graphics and OST. Also, no, I'm not including Sonic Shuffle because I don't have a Dreamcast to play it on, and I don't even want a Dreamcast right now, let alone for this crappy party game. I mean, have you seen the prices on eBay? Oh my god. All right, that's everything. Let us begin the end of our year. Friends, loved ones, it pains me to say this. But Sonic has had a lot of bad games. Some are better than others, but none of them can truly be called good. And for many years, Sonic fans have fought over which one is truly the worst of them all. But in the end, only one can truly claim that title. Here are the nominees for the worst Sonic game of all time. Take hold of the destiny I may give you life. Can you stay forever more? Or are you gonna leave for me? No matter what it takes for me. Sonic Freeriders. Yep, in the face of all the other bad Sonic games, Sonic Freeriders, in my opinion, is the worst of them all. I threw it in the trash for Pete's sake. Honestly, this is less of a terrible game and more like a stain on humanity itself. What do I rip it to first? Oh, I know, this game doesn't work. 
thanks to being a launch style for the world's best accessory to connect, you had to move your entire body to do everything. Racing, navigating the menu, skipping cutscenes, the whole kit and caboodle. So unless you're someone who regularly works out, this game will become your workout. And not in a good way. Constantly having to bend forwards and backwards, wave your hands around, jump, spin around, jump and spin around, all while maintaining your lead in the race is so physically demanding that you might as well climb a mountain at that point. Of course, all that would be bad enough, but like I said, this game doesn't work. So all your gymnastics probably aren't even going to help you in your race. Winning isn't impossible, but with all that to do, it's so unreasonable that you just want to break your TV. The story is also laughably poor. Eggman puts on this disguise, which thankfully none of the characters buy, collects data from all the racers as they race, attempts to use the data to win the Grand Prix himself, but finds out Metal Sonic gave Eggman fake data so he could challenge Sonic with the real data. It's such a bare bones and moronic plot that I can't believe this was even greenlit. Not helping the fact that the only good characters are team heroes, and even then, they're just there. I've honestly never liked Team Babylon in prior Riders games, but at least they served a narrative purpose. Rather hilariously, they add nothing to Free Riders whatsoever. The only purpose they serve is to rival team heroes, and that's it. I get that they're an established part of the Riders games at this point, but surely you could have had them do SOMETHING other than be their annoying one-dimensional selves for hours on end. Team Dark is also just there with the robot responsible to collect data for Eggman, meaning they have more purpose than the poster boys of the sub-series, and Team Rose turns Amy into an obnoxious ditzy fangirl who screams 24-7, making them the second worst team in the game. Free Riders isn't even that pleasant to look at, despite being the first and last Riders game to be on an HD console. Everything looks so plastic and fake, and the cutscenes are just literal slideshows with a TV filter on it to try to fool you to thinking it's television. Normally, the saving grace of a Sonic game is the music, but outside of the main theme free and a few notes on the last track, I can't remember any of the music from anywhere. It's honestly quite sad because when you look at the tracks themselves, they're actually decently designed, and there were a couple moments of the story that did get a laugh out of me. But all that means next to nothing in the face of everything else that plagues this game. If you guys recall in my review of Sonic 2 when I showcased my rating score, I described a 1 out of 10 score as basically Satan. And I mean it. I don't give out that score like it's candy. It takes a lot. And I mean a lot for me to give a game that score. But this one absolutely earned it. Don't ever play this game. Even if you plan on marathoning all the Sonic games, the only thing you'll get out of it is a sore body. And you can get that just as easily by falling down a flight of stairs. For free, no less. Sweet! You know, I once asked for Sonic Chronicles for Christmas because I wanted to own every Sonic game I could play at the time. However, after making it through Chapter 1, I didn't have any motivation to continue. It was just that boring to me. Cut to several years later when I decided to do the Year of Sonic, I knew I had to finish this game for the sake of making this and a couple other videos. And let me just say, playing this game was one of the most mind-numbing experiences I've ever had playing a game. Every minute of my playthrough was spent wanting to turn it off, but I had to keep going for the sake of content. I wasn't happy that it was over when it was finished, nor was I angry. I was hollow inside by the time I reached the credits, and I haven't touched the game since. Sonic Chronicles is the first and only Sonic RPG ever made, and I can see why. I've heard the story is considered the best part of this game, or at least how it handles the characters, but for me, I was too bored to give two f**ks about this story. It's all about the ancient Nocturnus clan wanting to return to Sonic's world and conquer it after being locked in the Twilight Cage for 4,000 years. And while that is a neat idea, it's presented in such a boring way. The characters are perfectly fine in this game, except for Imperator X who still sucks, but none of them are really that interesting. Not even the fan favorite Shade, who I honestly don't get the hype around. The gameplay, however, is the worst part of this game. I could go into depth on how the combat works, but that would imply that the combat has depth. All it amounts to is normal attack that misses half the time, bigger attack, status move, and occasional QTE to avoid damage. Rinse and repeat for 12 hours. There is a Chow Garden to raise Chow with certain elemental attributes, but I spent a total of zip in it because I couldn't care less about any Chow Garden. Oh, and the best part? Everything is controlled via the touchscreen, even outside of combat. Speaking of, the maps are completely unmemorable. You move your character via dragging the stylus, and the few puzzles you do, with one exception, are just the same place a character on this switch and that switch over and over again. Chronicles is also f***ing ugly! I know this is the DS, but I've seen the DS do much better than this, with the same franchise no less. Hell, the PlayStation 1 could do better than this! 
The OST is equally awful because, with the exception of the intro music, every song in this game is a demix of some older song, and they all sound awful. The frame rate is also inconsistent with severe drops at random intervals. Not gonna lie, I would love to play a Sonic RPG, but this is not what I wanted. It's not what anyone wanted. If Sega ever tried this again, they should do it like Mario & Luigi. That's a combat system well worth their money. Though I don't think they ever will do another Sonic RPG thanks to Kenders. Regardless, the only reason Chronicles is above Freeriders is because it at least tries to give a damn about the characters while Freeriders completely butchers them. Other than that, this is the worst RPG I've ever played. At least until I get around to playing Paper Mario Sticker Star. Mother of mercy, I hate Sonic Rivals 2 so much. I couldn't stand every minute of playing this utter waste of a game that they dared to call entertainment. The slightly better graphics and soundtrack are the only things keeping this empty void from sinking as low as Freeriders and Chronicles. There is so little I can genuinely say I liked that it's insufferable to even think about. The only remotely interesting thing this game contributes to the franchise is that this is the only game in the series where we hear Eggman Nega's voice. Without that, there is nothing this game offers that hasn't been done 10 times better in prior games. Okay, to calm down a little bit, I'm sure many of you are surprised that Sonic Rivals 2 of all things is the third worst game on this list. Since compared to a lot of other Sonic games that are either poorly made, unfinished messes, impacted the franchise in some way, or all three, this one is pretty tame and inoffensive. But that's just it. While I would prefer to not do either, I would rather sit through a game that constantly makes me angry over a game that makes me feel nothing at all. Except Freeriders, that's a kind of an exception to the rule, but that's also a 1 out of 10 rather than a 2 out of 10. Regardless, I truly felt nothing playing Rivals 2. The story straight up does not give a f very rarely does anything line up with the other stories, and everyone's reason for racing is whatever they can pull out of their ass at the moment. Oh yeah, every character has their own story, and there are 8 characters! In order to get the full story, you need to play through the same story and the same 6 levels 8 times. That's so repetitive, and I hope the person who thought this was a good idea was fired. The stages themselves are so unmemorable, I can't even remember their names. And the gameplay of racing each other to the goal, while a neat idea, is so brainless you can literally brute force your way to the end and get an S rank. You guys thought Forces Force feeds you S ranks? Try Rivals 2 for a minute. There are a various amount of items and a special ability for each character, but they just amount to either go faster or mess with your opponent. There's also these new challenges like playing keep away with the bomb, straight up beat the shit out of each other, and capture the chow, which only shows up once in Silver Story, but none of them are very fun. At best, they're tolerable. At worst, they're annoying. Oh, and the boss fights are an absolute joke. All of them. It feels like this game was purposely designed to suck the life out of you as you played, and if it was, then it succeeded. Everything about it was a worthless slog of suffering, and it will forever collect dust on my shelf along with Rivals 1 and my PSP. At least until I try out the Monster Hunter games on it. Then my PSP will breathe once more. But until then, Rivals 2 deserves to be forgotten. Before traveling to England last month, my family had to stay where I was living for a couple weeks or so. During that time, my little brothers wanted to play one of the GameCube games I owned, and I reluctantly booted it up. However, just looking at them play the game was enough to make me want to vomit. Not because they were playing badly, but because the game they were playing was... Shadow the Hedgehog. I'm sure many of you were expecting this since I expressed some deep disdain for this game, but believe it or not, there are actually a couple things in this game that I legitimately liked. This is the first game to introduce the incredible eye candy that is the CGI cutscenes, and they still look great nowadays. The soundtrack has more than a few good songs despite being so focused on Edge, and on your first or even second playthrough where it hasn't quite hit you that this game's a piece of shit, the opening level of Westopolis is pretty cool. And this is also where the game peaks, in the first five minutes. You can shut it off after here, you're not missing anything. Okay, that's not true. The game actually peaks in the last story, where for once, things actually make sense and the edge is lowered to only two swears, despite the underwhelming final boss. Anyway, this game f***ing sucks. Everyone talks about how Shadow was totally ruined, and even though his erratic behavior does make a little sense since he's going through an identity crisis, I agree with them. Shadow is so insufferable no matter what path you choose. Despite the options for Hero Path, Neutral Path, and Dark Path, 
It's actually villain path, asshole path, and slightly less of an asshole path. Speaking of that, this game has a morality system, and it works in two forms. The first is killing the good guys or bad guys to fill up two separate meters, and when one of them is full, you can either use Chaos Blast or Chaos Control, which is a neat idea. The other method is three separate missions for every single level that eventually branch off into ten separate endings, which is terrible, why the hell do they do this? This means that in order to beat the game, you gotta play it ten times! And you even unlock the last story after doing all of it, which completely negates all the other playthroughs. What else is there to say? Uh, Black Doom is still a boring and terrible villain. As you can see, the day of reckoning will soon be here. Find the seven Chaos Emeralds and bring them to me as promised. Like, the only good things about him are his decent boss fight and his voice. Aside from that, he's generic in the Dark Path and stupid in the other paths. The gameplay itself isn't that much better. Shadow is way too loose, the homing attack is the worst it's ever been, and while there is a nice variety of firearms, they just make the game too easy. Seriously, nearly everything can be solved by pumping it with lead. The worst part about all this is that this single game practically ruined any chance of other characters gaining their own game, as this is the last Sonic game that features someone other than Sonic in the main role. It's not quite the worst Sonic game ever, but it is very much not good in the slightest and offers very little that's substantial to the franchise. Like, we got a confusing fuster cluck of a story with 90% of it not even being canon. Thanks for that. Only one thing left to do. To put the past behind me. Chaos Control! Oh, I know you all were waiting for this one. Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. One of the heaviest hitters when it comes to bad Sonic games. There is frankly so much I could get into regarding just how bad this game is. However, I feel like the internet has already done that enough times before. Yes, the characterization of every single Sonic character is bad. Yes, the game is poorly optimized and the graphics look like a PS3 shovelware game. Yes, nobody knowing when to shut up gets really annoying really fast. Yes, the story is cut and dry, and in some ways even dumber than that of 06. Yes, the OST is not bad, all things considered, yet it pales in comparison to just about every other game in the franchise. Yes, the developers were royally screwed over by Sega, and that cost them a potentially interesting project. Almost every major bad thing anyone has ever said about this game is absolutely true. And at this point, is there really anything I can add? Well, yes. I don't think it's as horrible as everybody else does. Oh, don't get me wrong, it's bad for sure. But there are certain things in this game that people complain about that I don't fully get behind. The combat is bad. I don't know about that, everyone feels different to control and I kinda have fun beating up robots, especially the bosses. The new designs are terrible. I don't really hate or even dislike the new designs. I mean, Eggman is way too buff, but other than that, I don't mind how they look. Lyric is a bad villain. In Shattered Crystal, yeah, but I still believe him to be a pretty good villain in Rise of Lyric, and very much overhated. Sorry if I didn't go into a howling rage with this one, I'm just not really as passionate with Rise of Lyric as I am with prior bad games. And like I said, that's mostly due to everyone else kinda doing that for me. Oh well, the game sucks either way, that much doesn't change. But now I know your weakness, Sonic. It's your friends. You're wrong, Lyric. They're not my weakness, they're my strength. You know, the Rivals duology was a neat idea. A 2D platformer built around racing each other to the finish line? That sounds right up Sonic's alley, but they were bogged down by incredibly poor execution. I've already expressed my hatred for Rivals 2, so naturally the first Rivals game wouldn't be that far behind. I did have some goodwill for Rivals 1 after I played it, but in retrospect, I don't know why. The playthrough wasn't pleasant in any sense of the word, but thankfully it does have a few elements of quality that Rivals 2 sorely lacked. There's only four characters this time around, which makes for a far less nonsensical story and a far less repetitive endeavor. You are still playing through the same game four times, but the game's rather short, so it's not as irritating as you think. This is also Silver's first canonical appearance, and while he is a little iffy in this game, he's still enjoyable, I guess. Uh, actually, I think that's it for the positive stuff. The general consensus for this game is that Rivals 2 is actually superior since it has more characters, but as I've expressed, only having half the characters is a better route. It also makes sense that every character that's not Sonic to be one of his past rivals. However, there's not really much else I could say regarding everything else. The reasons for racing and fighting each other is still mostly whatever they can pull out of their asses, and the gameplay is pretty much just like Sonic Rivals 2, just with less characters. If I don't sound angry enough, it's because I don't care. No one really gives a shit about either Rivals game, 
And it's honestly a blessing that we didn't get Sonic Rivals 3 for the PS Vita or some shit. Because goodness knows that would have been even bigger, dumber, and more repetitive. If you plan on getting a PSP, don't do it for these games. Do it for Monster Hunter. I'm sure that's a worthwhile purchase, far more than both of these games combined. Let's just move on. Believe it or not, Rise of Lyric wasn't the first Sonic Boom game I played. Shattered Crystal was. And because of that, I remember playing it a lot as a kid and really liking it. However, kids really shouldn't have opinions because nearly all of them are bad. So I gave it another shot recently. A bunch of people on the internet have said this is actually a pretty decent game, and after replaying it, no! no! But it's not the worst thing ever, and it's definitely better than Rise of Lyric. Of course, it's not saying much, but we'll take what we can get. Despite being a tie-in for Rise of Lyric, the story is completely different from it. Amy gets captured by Lyric, and Sonic has to save her alongside his friends. Basic plot that doesn't get any deeper than that, nor does it try to. Some people have said that the comedy in this game is pretty good, but I don't agree. Maybe it's the lack of voice acting, but a lot of the jokes don't really work for me. Styx is easily the funniest, but in this game, she's still not that funny. There are a couple good jokes, but they're the exception rather than the rule. The gameplay is similar to Sonic Rush with 2D side-scrolling platforming, but it pales in comparison to Sonic Rush. No matter what character you play as, everything feels super stiff and there's a lot of automated sections that get old fast. This game does try to be a Metroidvania, which is interesting for a Sonic game, but what it ends up being is a Metroidvania if you're sucked and free of everything that makes a Metroidvania fun. You see, there are these medals you can get by either collecting a bunch of MacGuffins, finishing the stage in a certain amount of time, or finishing with a certain amount of rings. The thing is, you can't get every collectible until you have all the playable characters, and those medals are required to unlock stages. Yep, you are forced to backtrack and get more stuff every time you hit a roadblock. For me, I only ever had to backtrack once near the start, but I can imagine this getting annoying for anyone who doesn't get everything. There are also these races against a different character and automated sequences to chase after this driller worm, but they're all pretty boring. I don't know what else to say, man. I guess the environments look nice for the 3DS, but the character models really don't. Okay, I'm getting bored just looking at this footage, guys. I'm moving on before I fall asleep. You know, the way people online talk about Sonic 4 Episode 1, you'd think it broke into their house, beat them up, killed their dog, and stole their car or something. Like, jeez guys, I know it's bad, but nothing really got on my nerves that much. Except Metal Robotnik, that's still awful. Everything else though, I don't get why people hate this game to the extent that they do. I mean, sure, movement is kinda jank, there's no momentum when the level design clearly calls for it, everything is a reskin from past games, and the music is mostly garbage, However, I can't really bring myself to hate it. Nearly everyone says that it's too short, but I think that's kind of a blessing since no one would want to play this game for longer than necessary. Like, imagine if you had this for the same length as Sonic 2 or 3. That'd be something worth hating. At the same time though, I kinda understand why people are so angry at this game. Like, this was marketed as a sequel to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which was, at the time, the best classic Sonic game ever. And this is the end product. If this wasn't called Sonic 4, I think people would be a lot more lenient with it. But that's sadly not the case. Sorry I didn't despise this game or anything, but at least there were plenty of others I did despise. If I had to talk about Sonic Boom anymore, I'm going to lose my shit. Fire and Ice is fine! yet also completely disposable, just like all the other games prior to the century. So, I guess the Sonic Boom cast of Fire and Ice powers now? It literally makes no sense how they got it, and they aren't even remotely concerned about it for any longer than 10 seconds. Even weirder is the fact that even though Sonic and Amy are the only ones with Fire and Ice powers at the start, Tails was able to make everyone have those same powers through random technology bullshit that isn't elaborated on at all. The villain in this one is a new robot made by Eggman that has magnetic powers. He's small, in love with Eggman, becomes Styx's new pet because he's an idiot, and that's his entire character. Now you guys see why I left them off the villain ranking. There is some charm in this one compared to the other two Boom games. I do like Styx in this one. She's by far the funniest when she's paired up with Defect, and the presentation is definitely improved since we moved on from static text boxes to fully animated cutscenes and voice acting. The character models still aren't appealing, but I definitely like the environments a lot more. The gameplay is largely the same as in Shattered Crystal, just with a few improvements, like smoother controls and removing the need for backtracking, which is neat I guess, but it is still guilty of automation and really long levels that aren't very interesting. The fire and ice powers, despite being the central theme, aren't used to their fullest at all in this game. All you do is melt ice in your way or freeze water to run on it. That's it. 
The races from Shattered Crystal are back and they're better, but still not very fun. There are actual boss fights this time and they're all okay. That's it, I'm tired of talking about these games. Sonic Boom may have had potential, but my goodness, the execution was lame. I'm so relieved that this is the last Sonic Boom game because now I can lead this obnoxious farce of a sub-series in the dust where it belongs. After this video, I'm only ever talking about the real Sonic, movie Sonic, and depending on how it goes, Sonic Prime. Thank you, bye. Also, don't even come at me in the comments saying that Styx is canned in the main universe thanks to Sonic Frontiers. That reference makes no sense. Her only appearances are in a mobile game and Mario and Sonic, both of which aren't canon. Sonic Boom isn't canon. It's dead now. I'm never going back to it. F*** you. Styx, come help me discipline your little BFF. I What? Yep, we're tackling three games at once for this segment, and I'm pretty sure y'all know which ones they are. The Sonic Advance Trilogy. I am not a fan of these games. Any of them. This is such an average trilogy in my eyes that I don't understand how it's so popular to so many fans. I might as well talk about each of them and why I see them as just average. Sonic Advance 1 has almost nothing to talk about. You have your multiple playable characters and classic Sonic-esque gameplay. Sonic is good, Tails and Knuckles are fine, and Amy sucks ass. The only noteworthy thing about this game that I want to bring up is the special stages. You need to find a special spring to enter them, and you get only one shot at them before having to re-enter the level and try again. They're skydiving on the GBA, and it sucks. Advance 2 is the same game with the same characters, but faster, and I kinda like it more because of that. When playing casually, it's kinda fun to just blast through the stages and keep your speed up. When going for the emeralds though, it's a pain in the ass wholesale. So you gotta collect seven special rings in one run of the stage, and then make it to the end without dying just to attempt one of these stages. The special stages themselves aren't really that bad up until the last one, but it's still a migraine and a half just getting to them. And if you want to unlock Amy, you gotta collect all the emeralds with every single character. That is straight up cruel. At least we get Cream in this game, which is sweet because she's sweet and fun to play as. Advance 3 is the worst in my opinion. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The controls suck. I don't care if anyone says they need to get god. I know what I played and what I played was terrible. There's a new partner mechanic which can lead to some interesting combinations, but you'll only ever need Sonic and Tails or Knuckles and Tails. The others are either useless or just plain suck. This game also has hub worlds, and they are completely superfluous. Like, everyone says Unleashed hub worlds are pointless, but those hub worlds are works of art that have life put into them. These are padding in a game that doesn't need it. The emeralds are still a pain in the butt to get, though. You gotta collect the chow layer throughout the stages and the hub world, which is tedious. Then you gotta collect a special key that appears randomly in the stages because apparently the chow wasn't enough, and then you can try the special stage. The stages themselves are fine, the last one's a pain in the butt, but they should only take two tries at most. However, you can only retry the stage if you have any more keys. So if you're out of keys, that's another trip through the stage to get another key, which is fun! The story in all three of these is a load of nothing. All of them are your basic Stop Dr. Eggman plot, and it doesn't get any deeper when Advance 3 throws in general. The ending's kinda nice if you played Sonic Battle, but aside from that, he's about as deep as any other non metal Sonic robot. And no, the comics don't count as good characterization for the games. So yeah, average is a pretty fair judgement in my book. I'm just gonna leave you guys with the order in which I'd rank them. 3, 1, 2. Moving on. Well, I finally decided I prefer Sonic Battle over the Sonic Advance trilogy, but only by a little bit. For one, there's an actual story, and it's pretty decent. The Sonic cast discovering Emerald and helping him to evolve and grow stronger until he gets too powerful and has to be destroyed is a very bittersweet story. It does have some instances of bad characterization and lore f**k-ups, I'm looking at you, Amy. But for the most part, it's a decent narrative. The gameplay is what makes it better than the Advanced Trilogy for me. It's a fighting game, and it's a lot of fun at first. Each character has a wide variety of moves you can use to attack and move around, and there's also special attacks that you can use in the air and on the ground. Emerald is quite unique in the fact that he gains more moves from fighting, so he can be an assortment of all the characters' abilities and become the second strongest character in the game. I say second because Sonic was still able to take him down, no sweat. However, that doesn't mean the game is all that good either. Emerald at first is really bad to play as. He's slow, weak, and just unpleasant to control. The game is also really repetitive with this gameplay route. Fight for five rounds against these robots. Now do it again for ten. Switch to Emerald at random point. Now switch back to the other character. Rinse and repeat until you see the credits. Also, the fact that it's on the GBA of all things makes the 3D aspect a bit difficult to manage. 
While I would like to see other games get the remake or remaster treatment, this is one of those games that I feel needs a remake treatment the most in order to truly shine. There is some good stuff here, but a lot of it is undermined by other stuff. Who knows, maybe this will be the next game to get the remake treatment. Then again, maybe not. I'm willing to bet you guys weren't expecting a classic Sonic game to be this low. Well, sorry to the Sonic CD fans out there, but I do not care for this game. It's a classic Sonic game, so there's not really a plot, but this game does introduce Amy and Metal Sonic, so that's cool. The gameplay is where I lose interest in this game, though. There's a much bigger focus on exploration rather than platforming, and it doesn't feel right in a classic Sonic game. Like, one of the things you require to get the true ending is to get a good future in every stage. To do that, you gotta time travel to the past by passing a sign that reads past and building up enough speed to launch yourself through time. Then you find a machine in a certain place and destroy it. Do this for every act and you get the good future for that level. As you might imagine, that's pretty annoying, so the alternate method is to collect the time stones. You get those the same way you did the Chaos Emeralds in Sonic 1. Make it to the end of the stage with 50 rings and enter a special ring. I don't hate these special stages, but later down the line they can get pretty difficult. Thank goodness Origins lets you sacrifice a coin for another attempt. There are a few good things, like the Super P.O. being fun to use, and the soundtrack's pretty nice, US and Japanese. But aside from that, it's a game. It's not good, but it's not bad either. It's just right in the middle, figuratively and literally. <laughs> Secret Rings has always been a love it or hate it Sonic game. There's not really any middle ground when it comes to general consensus, so I think I might be making history right now. Yeah, I'm fairly neutral on Secret Rings simply because there's a lot to like and hate about it. For one, the story is really good. It has that Sonic charm while maintaining a generally serious tone. The fish out of water elements aren't that good in my opinion, though that's because I don't really like fish out of water stories in general. Plus, I think I might have given a Razor Chain a little too much credit in my ranking, but the rest of it works well. I especially love Sonic and Shara's relationship, and I don't mean that kind of relationship. The gameplay is, of course, where the hate part comes in. But I don't exactly hate it. It's the auto running with motion controls, yada yada yada. Everyone knows about it, everyone's mostly right about it. I personally was able to get used to it and found it a little fun at points, but I will admit it can be really finicky at points. Especially the fact that Sonic runs automatically. Like, why did you have to go and do that? The music is a bit of a mixed bag, honestly. There are some true bangers, but most of it I barely remember. The game is definitely playable, and it's more enjoyable than the worst Sonic games. But unfortunately, the length and the motion controls kinda bogged it down. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing it again sometime, but that sometime will come for a long while. <sighs> Let's get this over with. Yeah, I'm sure you all were really confused why this one hadn't popped up yet. Sonic 06 is this high on my ranking simply because I like it that much. To start with, I kinda like the story. Yeah, there are some flaws with it, but I think this is a serious Sonic story done well. I mean, you have the introduction of Silver, the greatest Sonic character ever, and the one-time appearance of Mephilus, the greatest Sonic villain ever. Yes, this plan is convoluted, but come on, it's Mephilus the Dark. He's scary, cunning, and just plain awesome. I also find the gameplay quite fun. Yeah, the characters are slower, but I got used to that pretty early on. The only character I didn't like to play as was Amy because of her tiny ass hammer. Sonic's fun as always, Tails isn't that different from his adventure days, Knuckles, while buggy hit points, was fairly enjoyable to glide around and fight as. Shadow's combat is fun, and while the vehicles are a little wonky, they're not horrible to control. Rouge is the same as Knuckles, Omega is a walking tank, Silver is my favorite to play as because of the psychokinesis, and Blaze is close behind with their pyrokinesis. The OST is also a really good jam, and while in-game graphics are kinda... eh, 
the CGI cutscenes are phenomenal to this day. Yes, the game is very much unfinished, and there is a lot of roughness to it. But outside of a couple bugs I went after myself, I had a surprisingly smooth experience, though your mileage may vary depending on which console you're playing on. Honestly, even though this is number 21, I weirdly like this game far more than every game ahead of it up until number 10. In fact, I want to put this game a lot higher on my ranking, but I know in my heart that I can't. Because this is not a good game. It's a very bad game. But that doesn't stop me from loving it. In fact, going forward, I refuse to bash this game. Because everyone else has done that at least 10 times now already. I'm sick and tired of it. And even if I wasn't, I'd just be repeating what everyone else has already said. What could I reasonably add at this point in time? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So that's why I'm putting Sonic 06 just shy of the top 20. Hate me if you will for this, but this is how I feel. Don't try to change my mind, because you will fail. Much like Sonic Rivals, the general consensus around Team Sonic Racing is that it was an okay kart racer, but it's not worth caring about anymore. Personally, I think it still deserves some love. Like, yeah, in comparison to stuff like Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, TSR isn't really amazing or anything, but that doesn't make it bad by any means. The race courses are well designed, the way it feels to race at top speed feels great, and even though the Wisps are back for the fourth time, their usage as items is really creative and fits with the game, almost like in colors. The team mechanics are also quite good. You can pass items to your teammates who are struggling, give them a boost of speed with a slingshot, and activate an ultimate team boost to bulldoze through other racers. The boost even plays different character themes from past games depending on who you're playing as while in use, which is always cool. The story may not be anything to write home about, but it's still enjoyable to sit through. It has a couple problems like the characters unnecessarily keeping things secret, and Zavok really didn't need to be here at all, but it still doesn't make the story bad. Silver's an absolute gem after all. I still believe that this game is overhated. Just because X Kart Racer is better doesn't mean Y Kart Racer is terrible. In fact, if you get a bunch of your friends together, it can be a fun time. Maybe a short fun time, but still a fun time. This is another game that I feel gets hyped up way too much. Sonic Riders is decent, but I don't feel nearly as invested in it as many others are. This is the first 3D Sonic racing game, and for a first attempt, I will admit it can be pretty fun. The tracks are well designed with multiple pathways to take depending on the type of racer you are, be it speed, flight, or power type, and the trick system can be fun to pull off. However, there is one thing that makes me say it can be fun, and that is the game teaches you nothing. No tutorials or even any hints, you're just thrown into the first race expected to figure things out yourself, which is pretty lame for a game in 2006. The story isn't really that much better than Team Sonic Racing, honestly. It's a basic premise of entering a race run by Eggman, but oh no, he was planning something else the whole time, now we gotta stop him. This is also the introduction of the Babylon Rogues, and they're little more than the evil team heroes. Like, I don't hate the rogues in this one, but I do feel nothing towards their inclusion to the Sonic cast. Wave is a smartass who never gets reprimanded for any of her shitty actions, Storm is a complete idiot, and Jet has very little interesting things about him other than a strange sense of honor. And it sure is nice that Jason Griffith, only a year into his career, dared to ask, What if I took my Sonic voice and tweaked it to where it sounds like a pirate? Oh boy, that's so much better! It may sound like I don't like this game, but I do still think it's a better game than the ones prior on this list. I would just rather not play it very often. Maybe a remaster where it improves on some things would be able to make me like it more, but right now, it's just a decent racing game. Sonic 4 Episode 1 may have been a bad game, but look on the bright side. They did better with the sequel. Looking at most people's opinions on Episode 2, they agree that it's better than Episode 1, but don't tend to place it very far away from it either, let alone above something like Sonic Riders and Sonic Advance. Well, I'm one of the few people who actually likes this game more than most. The gameplay of this one is pretty much Episode 1, but done a lot better. There's far more original levels, with the only exceptions being remixes rather than copy-paste, 
and you have tails with you, which gives you extra moves like this wheel attack and the classic flying to get to higher spots. Metal Sonic is also here to rival you, and if you have Episode 1 on the same console, you'll unlock remixed harder stages from Episode 1 that show what happened to Metal after Sonic CD, which is neat, but short-lived. This game may not be the most amazing thing in the world, but for what it is, it's a substantial improvement over its predecessor, and I feel like it would get a lot more credit if it was anything other than a sequel to Sonic 4. But some bad aftertaste just can't be removed, I guess. If you haven't played this one, I actually recommend you give it a try. You can even ignore Episode 1, unless you want the Metal Sonic DLC. But whatever you choose, you might just end up liking this one. Okay, now it's time for me to start pissing off a large section of the fan base. While I did like Sonic Adventure, it is not one of the best Sonic games ever made. Not to me, at least. First things first, the story is pretty good. It has some nice lore and development for a couple characters. And of course, it has Gamma, one of the most tragic characters in Sonic. However, the presentation has aged horribly. I'm willing to be lenient with it since this is a very old game, but the outrageous mouth movements are just off-putting as hell. The voice acting is also off-putting. I don't particularly like the Avenger era cast that much, but man, you could seriously tell it's their first go-around as these characters. Dean Bristow as Eggman is the most competent, and Corey Bringus as Tails is the worst. Seriously, who let a child be a voice actor? Anyways, the gameplay is split up into six types. Sonic is the best one to play as with his high-speed platforming action, even though the walls are apparently magnetized. Tails' races are pretty good too, with some decent challenges you're unprepared. Knuckles' treasure hunt stages are kinda fun too, and a lot better than the Nessie 2, we'll get to those. Amy is the worst in my opinion because of her sluggish movement and stiff turning. And while it's fine in the hub world and open levels, it's not fine in tight corridors, which unfortunately is most of the levels for Amy. Gamma's shoot 'em up gameplay is on the same level as Tails for me, and Big is fine. Just fine. I'm sorry I didn't love this game like you all do, but I'm still convinced that most of you are nostalgia blind for this, and SA2 for that matter. Also, for anyone who's saying, of course you didn't love it, you played Adventure DX, which is a buggy port, you should play the original Dreamcast version, then you'll see it for the amazing game it is. Here's the thing. The reason I went with DX over the original is because the original's character models look hideous in my opinion. Sonic and Amy are the cheeks of a chipmunk, Eggman looks like he's covered in dust, and OH! Tails! What happened to your head? I know you crashed at the beginning of the game, but I don't think your head should look like that for a long period of time! Also, I knew that DX was hated, or at least disliked, but I wasn't sure why, and I only found out about the bugs after I finished the game. Even then, the only bug I experienced was when the walls in Emerald Coast were so magnetized that I got pulled into the ocean. So even if I did hunt down a Dreamcast and an original Dreamcast copy of the game, I'd still have roughly the same experience, just with worse character models. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, both versions of SA1 sit here in above average territory. I still think it's highly overrated, but a bad game, it is not. Yes! This is so much better than Sonic Adventure in every way possible. Like, seriously, it's hard to not love this game. I don't love this game. In fact, I only like it a little more than SA1. I don't even hold it in that much high regard. But why is that, you ask? Well, to start off with some positives, the story is great. The introduction of Shadow and the plotline about Eggman's grandfather Gerald is really interesting, if a little melodramatic at points. There are a few things that don't make sense, but it's still a good enough story. The presentation has been improved as the character models, while still blocky, look nicer, and the voice acting is better, except for Tails, again, having a kid voicing him. The gameplay is now split up into three different playstyles for two teams of three. Sonic and Shadow are largely similar to Sonic's gameplay and adventure, just without the magnetized walls, which is a major plus. Tails and Eggman pilot mechs and shoot everything, and at first this was fine, but the mechs quickly became slow and clunky to use, which is a little confusing since Gamma had the same playstyle with better controls. Knuckles and Rouge have treasure hunting, and I hate these levels. They're a lot bigger than before, which is a natural step forward, but they also took a step backward by restricting the radar to only detect emerald shards in a specific order, unlike in SA1, where it detects them in any order. Now, yes, you can still get them in any order you wish, but good f***ing luck doing so since they took away the bright glow the shards had before, making them much harder to spot. This is especially irritating in levels like Pumpkin Hill and goddamn Mad Space. I mean, you already have several upgrades for the characters, you seriously couldn't have given us SA1's radar as an upgrade? And then there's the Chow Garden. The mother 
fucking chow garden. I don't like this place at all. And let me explain why. One, when you enter the place, nothing tells you what to do. There's no signs, no Oma Chow to explain things, not even a video game pop-up to tell you things. Two, when you do figure out what you're meant to do, it's a boring process. It's cute at first, but feeding them and making them do their dumb activities gets old fast. I literally spent time in this place once and then actively avoided it for the rest of my playthrough. If I really wanted to play a pet simulator like Nintendogs, I'd just play Nintendogs. Except I don't want to play Nintendogs because Nintendogs is Nintendo. Okay, rant over. Sorry for the extreme rage. I've gotten a lot of people being really confused as to why I hate the Chow Garden, and even a couple of people actively shaming me for it. So I hope this cleared some stuff up. I do want to preface that I still think this is a kinda good game. I just don't believe it to be the fantastic game most people think it is. And I'm genuinely kind of angry at the people who love this game so much that they keep begging Sega for Adventure 3. Guys, you are never getting Adventure 3. Heroes in 06 are not Adventure 3. They are different games that only share similarities to Adventure 1 and 2. No matter what Izuka says, you are not getting Sonic Adventure 3. And if by some miracle you do, it's either gonna suck or not live up to the expectations you set on it for the past 20 years. You end up sad either way, so stop the pointless begging and play the great games you do get. Okay, bye! That was cool! Alright, the best Sonic Riders game. And it's only kind of good. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, I don't have that much investment in the Rider series. Way more than Boom and Rivals, but still not that much. Well, at least I had fun with this one. Zero Gravity Story is probably the best one in the trilogy. There's no Grand Prix, so the game instead is a bit of a mystery story with robots going rampant and the mysterious gravity powers of the Ark to the Cosmos. Some cutscenes are a little drawn out with the characters just standing around talking, but those are the exception rather than the rule. The robes are perfectly fine in this one, Wave is a lot smarter than she is an ass, and Storm is at least competent at his job. Jet is definitely at his best here, and I like that Jason went the high-pitched werehog route for his voice rather than the parrot route. Getting into the gameplay, it's largely the same as the first writers, just simplified. It's all about timing your button presses now, which some people have stated as a negative, but remember, the first writers taught you nothing about anything. I'm pretty sure half the people who played the original still don't know everything about it. This game keeps it simple, and I like it. The new mechanic is warping gravity to either drift around a tight corner or literally flying over a long stretch of track. During the flight, you can also fly into floating objects to gain a burst of speed, which can either help you gain the lead or waste your time if the object is too far away. This game's OST is probably my favorite of the trilogy, and I especially like how the songs for the races change every time gravity is used. That's a neat effect. Oh, and it looks good for a Wii game too. Yeah, I have a lot more positive stuff to say about this one, but this still isn't a game I return to often, simply because I enjoy the games ahead of it more. I'll still give it another go in a couple years or so, but for now, it's only kinda good and not great. Sonic games of the past and the future, come forth. And bow to your father! Oh yeah, the original Sonic the Hedgehog. The one that started the entire franchise. Many have said that this game hasn't aged well in most aspects, but I disagree. Sonic 1 is still to this day a fun game. Sure, nowadays we're all sick of stuff like Green Hill, but when you actually go back and play it in the first game, you realize what made it so special. The focus on speed and platforming, that iconic 16-bit music, everything about OG Green Hill still feels great. The other stages have their faults of course, with some being a lot slower placed than others, but those stages are still enjoyable to run through except Labyrinth Zone. This game also looks great, even after 31 years. Obviously, sprite work has improved since the days of the Genesis, but the vibrance here in Sonic 1 still stands the test of time. Although, I will admit that some things about this game don't hold up. The special stages never really bothered me, but I can see how frustrating a couple of them can be. Also, not having the spin dash because that wasn't a thing yet can be a little awkward when trying to break objects or kill certain enemies. 
Despite that, I still find Sonic 1 to be simple, fun, and nowhere near as bullshit as people say it is. Seriously guys, this game ain't that hard. What have you been playing? Sonic 1 wowed the world when it first came out. It showed that the then newcomer Sega was willing to make quality games for the public. So when a sequel was released, people were hyped. And they were not disappointed. Sonic 2 is better than Sonic 1 in every way possible. It has better sprite art, more levels, even catchier music, everything a sequel should have. It also gave us the Spin Dash for the first time, which has been a series staple until Sega just forgot about it. And Super Sonic, another series staple that's still fun to use in its original appearance. And who could forget the introduction of Miles Tails Prower, Sonic's best friend and trusted comrade for years to come. It is a little weird how you can't fly as him when he clearly can when playing as Sonic, and the fact that he doesn't have the super form makes getting the emeralds as him kind of pointless, but he's still a welcome addition to the cast. The special stages are a point of contention for many, and while I did struggle on them when I was a kid, nowadays I don't find them nearly as bad as people say they are. I mean the same people still think they're terrible after Origins gives you the opportunity to retry them with coins. Then again the spammers will find anything to complain about. In any case, Sonic 2 is an undisputed gem among Sonic games, but I don't return to it very often simply because I like other Sonic games more. But on the occasion that I do return, I know I'm in for a good time. Y'all probably aren't gonna like this one, but it's my list and my opinion, so please don't get mad at me. I know, I know, Sonic Forces is this high and you don't think it's a good game. I get it. I can even get behind some of the major complaints of this game. For one, the story has a lot of missed potential and kind of feels like it's going way too fast. For two, the levels are indeed way too short and feel like there should be more when there isn't. For a third, Classic is kind of shoehorned into the story and its levels kind of suck. There's a decent amount to dislike about this game, but for me, there's a lot more to like about this game. For one, the OST is pretty good, outside of Classic's levels. I especially love the music for the Avatar's levels, the final boss theme, and the epicness that is Infinite's theme. Speaking of the Avatar, even though they play mostly like Sonic, they're still fun to play as and even more fun to customize. There are a lot of options for you to play around with. The Avatar also has the Wisp Bonds, which, while plot-wise aren't explained at all, serve as fun additions that make creative use of the Wisp powers, but I will admit some of them are completely useless. Of course I have to talk about Infinite again. Yes, his backstory is clunkily executed and there is some missed potential with him as a character, but that doesn't stop him from being edgy as hell and even a little intimidating sometimes. He's no Mephilus, but he's still pretty good in my eyes. Looking at all of it, Forces is probably the biggest guilty pleasure of mine on this list. Yeah, I refuse to bash 06, but I still put it in a decent spot. Forces, however, is just shy of the top 10. That's how much I unironically like it. If you dislike or even hate this game, fair enough, you have ample reason to do so. But that won't stop me from being one of the few people on the internet who will defend this game. There's nothing the three of us can't achieve together. Victory is ours for the taking. Triple boost. You know, I originally had Sonic 3 and Knuckles in the top 10, but I decided that I like the current number 10 more. Regardless, I still really like this game. Sonic 3 and Knuckles was originally two separate games, Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles, but during development of Sonic and Knuckles, Sega made a way for the two games to be combined into the one game it was meant to be, and we got the best classic Sonic game ever. Until Mania, of course, but we're not there yet. First and foremost, this is hands down the best looking Sonic game on the Genesis. Dare I say the best looking game on the Genesis. The colors and sprites are simply beautiful and will never age no matter what. The gameplay is also the best of the original trilogy, plus CD. Sonic controls largely the same as in Sonic 2, but he can now use the fire shields to give him a dash and immunity to fire, electric shields to give him a double jump and immunity to electricity, and bubble shields to bounce and breathe underwater. Finally, water levels in Sonic are actually good. Also, this game introduces Sonic's most powerful form, Hypersonic, which Origins kept in so it's 100% canon Hypersonic deniers. The other two playable characters, Tails and Newcomer Knuckles, are also fun to play as. You can fly for a short period of time as Tails, glide and climb up the wall as Knuckles, and both have their own super forms this time around. Well, Knuckles does. Tails needs the super emeralds to access the super form, and neither one can use the elemental shields like Sonic can. 
but those are okay given what they can do. This is also the most story-rich Sonic game on the Genesis, with Eggman tricking Knuckles into thinking Sonic and Tails are the bad guys until betraying him and taking the Master Emerald for himself. And so began the endless string of Knuckles being treated like a constant fool. At least the first time makes sense. Regardless, the levels are some of the best in the classic era, the music is iconic, and all in all, it's a great time from start to finish. Definitely worth a playthrough, even if it didn't quite make the top 10. And here we are, the home stretch. Everything in the top 10 I consider to be great at worst and phenomenal at best. So you may be wondering just who took the number 10 spot from Sonic 3 and Knuckles? Well, let me show you. Yep, the sequel to Secret Rings is one of my favorite Sonic games. Sonic and the Black Knight was initially met with some hesitation, to put it lightly, and that was mostly due to it being a sequel to the not-so-great Secret Rings, among other things. Luckily, people have finally woken up and given the game another shot, and a lot of people really like it, myself included. Black Knight is simply a better version of Secret Rings. You still kind of auto-run, but they give you the nunchuck this time around, so no awkward motion controls for movement. Instead, we got motion controls for sword combat, because Sonic now wields a sword. Sword combat is hit or miss with a lot of people, but for me, it's very much a hit. Depending on how you swing the Wii Remote, you could do all sorts of moves ranging from normal slashes to homing slashes that can decimate hordes of enemies. You can also use your soul gaze to either speed things up or slow things down for more methodical attacks. Later down the line, you unlock Knuckles, Shadow, and Blaze as playable characters. And they're fine, honestly. I like that Shadow teleports during soul gauge, Knuckles can glide, and Blaze as the flaming pirouettes but they do feel a lot stiffer compared to Sonic. The story is quite good throughout. It's the same fish out of water type story, but it works since Sonic actually grows from his usual cockiness to surprisingly stoic while still having the 90s flair we love him for. It also gets rather philosophical at the end with the importance of how all life inevitably ends, but we can make the most of it with the time we're given. The game also looks really good for a Wii game, and the soundtrack goes so hard when it really didn't need to. Given how much art was put into Black Knight, I would have been interested in seeing a third storybook game. But given the reception at the time, we will never see another entry. Oh well, at least the story ended on the best note it could. surprises me the most about Sonic Rush Adventure? Some people don't even know it exists. Yeah, I've seen a couple people act like a game taking place in Blaze's Dimensions would be a cool new idea, but they don't bring up this game which does exactly that. Like, I know it's a DS game, but it's not that obscure. Well, whatever the case, Rush Adventure is a great game. Like the original Sonic Rush, the gameplay consists of speeding through various stages with the new boost mechanic. It's really fun to maintain your speed for an extended period of time, and when doing so nets you an S rank, Man, it feels even better. Blaze controls exactly the same as she did in Sonic Rush, which is to say very similar to Sonic, but she has her own moves like hovering and being able to dash higher and farther with her flames. This game also has a sailing mechanic to progress the story, and there are four types of water vehicles. The water bike, which I find to be the most fun, the sailboat, which is pretty slow and kinda boring, honestly, the hovercraft, which is pretty fun if a little slippery, and the submarine, which we'll use twice and then never again. Some people hate the sailing mechanic, but I don't really mind it, though it is what keeps me from liking this game more than the first Sonic Rush. The story is pretty good as well. Marine's character arc is mildly interesting, and it's nice to see just what Blaze's dimension is like. And then never again. I've expressed some disdain for Captain Whisker, and to be honest, those feelings haven't changed. They should have made him a threat, or at least funnier than he is. If I had to pick something I don't like about this game, I'd say the special stages where you race Johnny absolutely suck without any upgrades. With the upgrades, you can no-sell most of the races. Without them, good f***ing luck. If you have a DS or a 3DS, I recommend hunting down a copy of this game. If some people don't know about it, they should experience it. Might not play it often, but they'll have a fun time. Right. Sonic Rush, the first Sonic game on the Nintendo DS. And boy, is it a banger. While Sonic Rush didn't technically introduce the boost formula thanks to Hero Special Stages, it was the first to fully incorporate it into the regular gameplay, and it is really fun to use. 
You can blast through hordes of enemies at supersonic speed and make some pretty good airtime on ramps. There's a trick system to refill your boost gauge and also kill your ears, and it carried over into Rush Adventure as well. The special stages are some of the best in the series. It may be the half-pipe again, but with the snappy stylus controls, they're completely fair. The story is simpler compared to Rush Adventure, but simple isn't a bad thing. This is Blaze the Cat's first appearance, and I love her in this one. Her character arc is one of the best in the series, right alongside Shadow in Adventure 2, if I'm being honest. Oh, and it's also Eggman Nega's first appearance. He's... something. Anyways, the music is catchy and funky as always, and the game looks really good for a DS game. An early DS game at that, which makes Chronicles look even uglier than it is. I am a little sad that the Rush series didn't get an official third entry, and I say official because in a sense it did get a third and even a fourth game, but the original Rush is still a game that should be enjoyed by many. How is that? This next one's going to be a bit divisive as quite a bit of people dislike and even hate this game. But regardless, I still have fun running through the Lost World. Yeah, Sonic Lost World was, and still is, fairly divisive. Some love it, some hate it, and others are neutral in the matter. Let's get the obvious problems out of the way. Yes, there's obvious comparisons to Mario, seven worlds following the grass, desert, beach, snow, forest, cloud, and lava themes. Yes, the Deadly Six, aside from Zavok, aren't all that threatening as villains. And yes, the Wisps are shoehorned into this game with zero explanation. You happy? Good, because now I'm going to praise this game. First of all, I find Sonic really fun to control. Yes, there is a run button that negates all momentum, but Sonic doesn't need momentum to be fun, damn it! Whether it's the normal levels of running through the planets, the mock speed levels, or sections that require level of precision, or whatever gimmick they can come up with, I have a good time playing this game. Except the snowball level. That sucks. There's also this new kick ability that you can use to drop an enemy's guard, and it's fine, it's only really useful for Zavok's fight, but it's still okay. The parkour mechanic is really cool though, and I wish it would return in a future game. The story isn't that good if I'm being honest, but I still find it rather enjoyable. The Deadly Six may not be good, but that didn't stop me from laughing a couple times at their gags. And of course, I gotta talk about Zavok again. This is his best usage by far. He's an imposing unit of a villain, and he has the second best scene in the whole game. And he is definitely NOT a Bowser clone! If anything, he's better because Bowser is only sometimes a threat and really tired everywhere else. Anyways, I should also talk about the 3DS version. It's largely the same with the same story and many of the same mechanics, but I will say that I'm not a fan of anything that uses the gyro controls. They're really awkward and very unnecessary, with the worst examples being Zor's boss fights and the special stages. In fact, I prefer the Wii U version because of that. Also, a bit of a not-so-fun fact, this is currently the last Sonic game to use a CGI cutscene that's actually part of the story, and not just as an intro before the title screen. This one. <sighs> Why won't you bring them back, Sega? Well, at the very least, Lost World is still a great game in my eyes. 3DS version, not so much, but the Wii U version, most definitely. Sonic Mania, the Sonic game everyone seems to have fallen in love with, if not outright married. I really like this game, but I also feel its praise is a little overblown. However, I am mostly with everyone on its praise. This is the best classic Sonic game, period. The new sprite work that went into reimagining so many old levels is immaculate. Everything looks absolutely gorgeous, and the Sonic cast is more expressive than they ever were in the Genesis games. The remixes of old songs combined with brand new ones make this one of the greatest OSTs in the franchise. My favorite, of course, being the remix of Metal Sonic's fight in CD. The gameplay replicates the original feel of the Genesis games perfectly. Dare I say, it surpasses it, especially with the new Drop Dash ability. The special stages are really great too. It's a chase for the Emerald with a hard time limit, and everything feels like it was made for the Sega Saturn. There's a lot to love about this game, but like I said, I do feel its praise is overblown a bit. A common complaint is the lack of originality, and I do agree with it, especially since the few new stages we do get are really good. 
I've heard some people respond with, so what, it's not supposed to be original, it's supposed to be a nostalgia trip. But if that's the case, why bother with original stages at all? If they just wanted a nostalgia pander, why did they go through with the effort of making four original stages instead of just bringing back more old ones? And speaking of nostalgia pandering, this game loses a lot of its luster for anyone who's new to the franchise. Longtime fans like myself will enjoy it to its fullest, but newcomers will inevitably be confused. Also, I still don't got the hype around Mighty and Ray. Nothing you guys have told me has really convinced me that these two are worth caring about. Despite those flaws though, Mania is a damn good game. It's great even, but I'm just not into it as much as others are. Still glad that most people love it though. These final five games are games that I hold in the highest regard. These are, in my opinion, the cream of the crop when it comes to Sonic games. So without further ado, let's continue with... Aw oh, yeah, Sonic Heroes, the one game from the adventure era that I actually think deserves the praise it gets, and also a small bit of the criticism it gets. Sonic Heroes was the first attempt at a Team of Three system that wouldn't be tried again until TSR of all things. And I think it was executed very well. You got three types, speed, flight, and power. Speed is helpful for running through the stages, flight helps with tricky platforming, and power helps with roadblocks and combat. All three are essential in getting through the game, and no team member ever feels underutilized. The four teams you have are all integral to the story and have their own experiences. Team Sonic is a staring experience, Team Dark is hard mode, Team Rose is easy mode, and Team Chaos has missions for added variety. The story itself is a bit tough to follow, but it all leads up to one of the best climaxes in the series, with Metal Sonic becoming Metal Overlord in order to conquer the world and finally kill Sonic. The soundtrack is also a banger with iconic team themes, the main theme, and the amazing one I'm made of. Of course, the game is by no means perfect. The special stages are terrible, the controls do feel a bit loose at points, the team fights can be really easy, and the voice acting still isn't that great, with the worst Tails voice in the history of Sonic. What are we gonna do, Sonic? Despite that, however, I love this game quite a lot, even going so far as to get every A rank on it. In fact, I considered getting every S rank for every Sonic game as a part of this year, but decided not to. Heroes may still be a bit divisive, but I for one will give this game all the praise it deserves. Ah yes, the original nostalgia pandering game. Sonic Generations is a really great game. The 3D boost formula that was implemented in Unleashed makes its return here, and it feels great as always. The speed you get from running through the stages is almost Unleashed level fast. Not quite, but almost. Classic Sonic is here too, and he has a unique playstyle. He controls similarly to the original Genesis games, only this time you can instantly spin dash with the press of a button. All the stages are of course brought back from Sonic's past, and they look great reimagined in 3D. The remix music is also great too, with several bangers like Death Egg Robot, Crisis City Act 2, and many others. The 3DS version is pretty great too, but it does feel slightly lesser. Modern Sonic is more akin to the Rush games, and I've already explained why those games are great. Classic feels a bit different though. There's no instant spin dash, so instead they let him use the homing attack partway through the game. I personally don't mind the inclusion of the homing attack, but it did give me some Sonic 4 vibes. A lot of people consider this game to be almost perfect, like Mania, but while I do like it more than Mania, I don't think it's perfect, or even the best boost game. For one, this game hands out S ranks like they're candy. Seriously, all you need to do is not die, and 4 times out of 5 you'll get that S rank. For two, the story is non-existent. Well okay, there is a little story, but it's the bare minimum of what you need for a time travel story. Plus, it's riddled with some unfunny one-liners. If you didn't like Roger and Colors, he'd be even worse in this game. Now yes, Mania didn't really have much of a story either, but it was made to emulate the classic Sonic games, which didn't really need a plot due to their arcadey nature. Generations, in the day and age it was released, needed something of substance to drive players to finish it, but they barely put in any effort beyond the basics. Heck, the 3DS version is actually worse in that regard, with none of the other characters like in the console game, and just static text boxes for cutscenes. I know that makes it sound like I dislike this game, but it's number 4 for a reason. I still enjoy the game for what it's worth, it's just that I don't really think it's the best boost game. But we'll get to what I believe is the best boost game soon enough. Time to 
scramble some Eggman, Super Sonic style! Yeah, I know, right? Sonic Frontiers is all the way in the top three. I knew I was going to review this game as part of the year of Sonic, but when the release date was announced, I knew I had to place it in the rankings somewhere. After beating it, I did feel a little taxed, which made me unsure of where I placed it. But you guys saw my review. I love this game, so I had to place it high up and it ended up alongside the best of the best. Now since I already have a review of this game on my channel, I'm gonna keep my thoughts on Frontiers relatively brief. The story is one of the best in the series, the voice actors are possibly the best they've ever been, the OST slaps so much, the game looks great, the open zone environments are really fun to traverse, the combat is flashy and fun, the Cyrus face levels are kinda fun despite their jank, and the boss fights make this game the spiritual successor to Metal Gear Rising we've all wanted for ages. There are of course problems, the pop-in is really bad, the final boss is extremely underwhelming, you get worn out fast and you marathon this game, and a couple animations don't look so hot. But those problems don't deter me from loving this game to pieces. Oh, in case anyone's wondering if I've decided if I prefer Sage over Infinite, it's actually gotten harder for me to decide because I remembered a third of my judgement for my ranking was the boss fights. And Sage doesn't have any boss fights. Infinite's fights may have been easy, but three easy fights are better than none at all. But man, I feel like these two are gonna be locked in eternal combat if I don't decide soon enough. Tell you what, when I eventually get around to try fight Sonic Frontiers video, I will tell you at the end of it which one I decided on. Remember that. Also, Sage and Eggman's father-daughter relationship is perfect and amazing, and if I hear anyone bad it, I will saw their face off of the Beyblade! Okay, just kidding. Sorta. Whatever, go watch my review if you want to know more about my thoughts on Frontiers. Okay, bye! It amazes me that this game was considered bad back in the day. Hell, it amazes me that people still hate it today. Sonic Unleashed is a peak Sonic game. This was the first game to use the boost formula in a 3D environment, and they did a really great job with it. The speed you get with it is unbelievable. Everyone knows Sonic's the fastest thing alive, but this game makes you feel like the fastest thing alive. I get so much adrenaline from speeding through enemies and obstacles, and I can only imagine how it feels from Sonic's perspective. Of course, that's only half the game. The other half is the Werehog, and honestly, I disagree with everyone who says that he's bad, or worse, a poor man's beat-em-up. Like, are you kidding me? Look at what he can do! Did you actually spend time to unlock some good moves with the Werehog? Because when you actually invest in him, he becomes a killing machine! And I, for one, enjoy every second of his combat. The story is possibly the best story in the games. It has the perfect balance of lighthearted comedy and hard-hitting emotional beats. There's not a single moment where I dislike Unleashed's story, even for a second. The Wii version, sometimes called Unleashed by fans, is a bit lesser, but I still have a great time. The day stages are slower paced, but they're still well designed. I mean, they managed to fix Eggman Land. The Werehog is now split into multiple acts rather than one giant stage, and I'm neutral towards this since I didn't mind the long stages of the Werehog. You do get to use motion controls for combat, and that's cool. Unleashed, in my opinion, is the best looking Sonic game to this day. Frontiers came close, but the pop-in holds it back. The in-game graphics look way ahead of their time. This was a PS3 and Xbox 360 game, and the CGI cutscenes are Pixar quality. I'm dead serious, you can make an entire movie looking like this. Unleashed does look a bit dustier in comparison, but it still looks good for a Wii game. And of course, the OST is amazing. No arguments there. Unleashed is definitely a fantastic game, but it does have a few small issues to prevent it from being number one. I don't like that the battle music plays every time you fight an enemy in the night stages, and the sun and moon medals can be a pain in the butt to get, assuming you don't scour the hub world in night stages for them like I did. They may sound small, and they kind of are, but they're small issues that add up over time. Even so, I'll gladly give Sonic Unleashed a 9.5 out of 10 for being an awesome game. Definitely worth tracking down a copy, especially if you have a Series X. Seriously, 60 FPS Unleashed looks immaculate.
This may come as a surprise, but this wasn't the hardest ranking I've ever done. The final boss ranking was harder because unlike that list where I only knew my worst and my best, I had a general outline of what order the games would be in. Sure, some of them got switched around during scripting, but for the most part, the list was already planned out in my head. However, just like that list, I knew what my number one would be from the beginning. And just like its final boss, it passed with fine colors. It wasn't even close. Unleashed is a 9.5, bordering on a 10, and Colors is an 11, bordering on a 12. I don't say things like that lightly. Only games that truly speak to me get that kind of rating, and Colors is one of them. I love Sonic Colors so damn much, even in spite of its flaws. The story of Colors is often criticized for being badly written, but I disagree. There are a handful of bad moments, but the good ones seriously outweigh the bad. I get a good laugh out of just about every moment in this game, but that doesn't mean it's all jokes. There are a couple moments the game does take seriously, and they land. Not as much as other games, but they do land. Also, this was the debut of Roger Craig Smith as Sonic, and I don't care what anyone says, Roger has been my Sonic ever since the beginning. Jason is good, and Ryan is eh, but Roger captures the true essence of Sonic for me. Just a little more mature. Getting into the gameplay, this is my favorite boost gameplay. It isn't as fast as something like Unleashed or Generations, but it's still plenty fast. The 2D sections do get flack for being platform heady, but I find most of them fun. There are a couple of not so good ones, but they're few and far between. This game is also the debut of the Wiss, and they had their best usage in this game by far. The only one I don't care for is Cube with its stop and go nature. The others are an absolute blast to use with my favorites being Laser, Drill, and Frenzy. Of course I should bring up Colors Ultimate and how much I love it even more than the original. Colors was already a great looking Wii game, but Colors Ultimate looks even better. A lot of people complain about it being too bright and saying stuff like all they needed to do was port it over. Well I say different. Sure, they could have just ported it over, but they chose to do more with it because they wanted to. They wanted to make the game even more special than it already was, and while it didn't come out flawless, it's still the great Sonic colors we all know and love. Anyways, Colors Ultimate also adds new things like customizable icons and gear, a new Rival Rush mode with Metal Sonic, and a new Tails rescue mechanic, which gives Tails a little more to do. There's also the DS version, and while this is my least favorite of the three, it's still an amazing game. It's basically Sonic Rush 3 with the Wisp powers. There are even two exclusive Wisps, that being Burst and Void, who are fun to use as well. The story in this one is actually a little different from the console version, and it even includes Sonic's other friends for optional side missions. No matter the version I play, Sonic Colors is my favorite Sonic game. In fact, it's one of my favorite games of all time. It's one that I can play over and over and not have a single bad moment at any point. It's not a flawless game, but it is my favorite Sonic game. I'm Tony Sonic, and thank you for joining me on the Year of Sonic this past 2022. We've celebrated the legacy of the Blue Blur with some stops along the way, and while I may have milked it as dry as humanly possible, I still had fun making these videos for you all. Sonic may have more ups and downs than the craziest roller coaster, but I still have a lot of love and respect for this franchise. I look forward to every new product, whatever it is, and I only wish the best for Sonic going forward. Keep on running, Sonic, and we look forward to seeing what your bright future holds. Just